Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with a news update looking at patch and progress updates, some ship sales, some ship updates and improvements to the Reliant, a new reset tool. Actually, this week is quite a lot of PSA public service announcements for various aspects of the game and website more than anything else. Star Citizen Alpha 3.8.2, the next minor patch, should be in our hands by the end of February. And with this, the Carrack as well, which is probably the most anticipated ship at the moment anyway for Star Citizen. The next major patch is coming in March with Alpha 3.9 though. There was a sneak peek of the boxing ring in the newsletter this week which is part of the Kalesha Automated Prison in 3.9 with a Fight Club reference on the picture of First Rule. Obviously the first rule of Fight Club being that we don't ask when questions. There was also an LL Cool J quote um, from um, Mama Said Knock You Out of don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. I don't know about music. The official video, though, is all about, you know, boxing and stuff like that or fighting of some description in a boxing ring type situation. This will be a cool little stage to do um, some of that FPS punchy punchy. And we've got melee combat now. We've got stunning. And the future of that is supposed to be that you can potentially earn merits by doing those fights, betting on them, that sort of stuff. Merits are going to be the way that you sort of like leave prison, you pay off enough merits, you can leave um, and you can earn them in various ways and you can also use them to buy food and medicine and, and all that sort of jazz. And we've seen a bit more of the internals of prisons this week as well, which you can see in the background. There was a mini patch on the uh, PTU for a 3.8.1G patch. This is since closed. While well, assumedly they add more fixes, they did say we've collected enough data and we are going to be deploying a new PTU build once we have more tests to conduct. The patch addressed a uh, duping exploit, which is really important for if they want to have consistency of no resets between patches. They can't have duping bugs, they can't have ways to make infinite or huge amounts of alpha UEC really easily, and they will reset any time these sort of bugs are detected and um, patch them out and then reset hopefully. Um, so they also um, sort of like fixed a few crashing issues and a infinite loading screen issue as well. Please be aware that in 3.8.1 alpha at the moment though, that FOIP will be turned on by default. If this is a bug um, and it might try to use your webcam. Um, obviously it's just for your character's facial expressions. Make sure you turn this off in the options if you don't want to use FOIP or you're having frame rate and CPU issues as it can be a little resource intensive the FOIP. So uh, some roadmap updates. We don't have any additional sort of like bits added to the roadmap this week. They're aiming to add the Q3 2020 roadmap for Alpha 4.1 for the Persistent Universe next week and then 4.2 in the near future. We did however have a bit of progress with the Carrack getting ready for the Persistent Universe for 3.8.1. For 3.9's patch we had Mission Giver Eddie Parr that has seen a huge amount of work for that mission and give her locations like uh, Klesha Prison and New Babbage Interiors. They have had um, tasks both completed but also added. There was a lot of progress on the moons of Microtech as well. Restricted area reworks, player interaction improvements, high speed ship combat, player status system, which is the takes into account temperature and food and drink. Uh, the lawful surrendering, which has you be able to surrender rather than um, get you know shot to death. Um, and prison gameplay, they've all seen a jump in tasks completed this week. Weather locomotion, which has you sort of like having your movement affected by the weather, covering your face, that sort of stuff. That's almost completed. For 4.0, there's been a little bit of progress on the weapons um, that were moved in from 3.9. And a lot of work done on the sign distance field tech shields. Squadron 42 wise, notably AI has seen a lot of work uh, with um, FPS cover usage and flight mission logic improvements. CitizenCon 2020, so CIG have actually given a little tiny bit of information. We're actually just about ready to announce the date and location for this year. Expect news coming soon. We've made a point to get that info out to you all much sooner than in previous years. We know travel prep and planning takes time and we want to give you as much time as possible. I also expect personally, um, rather than what CIG have said so far, that we will we'll see a separation of the anniversary sale and CitizenCon again this year. I would expect CitizenCon again uh, probably October 10th-ish time. That would be my expectation. Uh, and the anniversary sale around the end of November, um, 23rd, 24th November. Around then is typically where it is, I believe. Some ship stuff this week. The Reliant Core is available as a discounted starter package for $70, which obviously comes with access to Star Citizen. The 
idea being that it's the most affordable two-person ship and you know it's near valentine's day though i would suggest maybe the pisces might be the cheapest two-person ship um i suppose not for ship operation one of you would just have to be sitting in the back but um you know what i mean uh misc reliant series has ad updates as well and they're planning to get these updates in for alpha 3.9 this includes a second gimbal twin mount by default that will be added to the reliant core Two size 3 missile hardpoints will be added to all Reliance. This will have two size 2 missiles per rack by default. And there's a minor health buff which will be applied in key areas to help strengthen some wing points that were too weak. So interesting little updates to the Reliant core making it a bit more powerful. Um, which makes sense because it cost a little bit too much for what it was. And I believe the sort of like Avenger Titan was a bit better in my opinion. So maybe we'll uh, see how this makes the ship um, after those improvements. We still have until February 10th to get the Drake Cutlass Red Medical Marvel at the exclusive war bond price, which is, I believe, $120 for that war bond price. Um, you can also CCU at the war bond price as well, so you can upgrade it. Um, I believe the standard normal version, which will then be available at the store permanently, is $135, and that can be bought with store credit. And that version. There is a Valentine's Day make a card contest on at CIG with the various ships as prizes for the top three entries. That ends on the 12th of February. There will then be a new contest on the 13th of February alongside a bevy of delectable goodies. Um, I do not know what that could actually be, but uh, typically around Valentine's Day, there's a ship sale with sort of like ships that can be used as a pair. Um, so with two crew, that sort of stuff. Some Valentine's themed skins and loadouts sometimes go on sale. Like we have the Heartseeker, for example. Also, mid-February, around 14th, is historically where we have the first concept ship or vehicle sale of the year. So that could certainly be something that CIG puts on. And I would very much like to see a uh, new concept sale. I'm, I'm a sucker for concept ships. CIG have also launched a new tool giving you the handy ability to manually reset your character at your convenience. So this was a highly requested feature and you don't need to now submit a CS ticket. Um, you can literally just go into the RSO website and into your hangar and bam, um, there's an option there uh, in the options there. Uh, it will allow you to take control of your resets and reset them whenever you need it. But it is their first iteration of the tool that is just a sort of short term solution step towards the goal of eventually having no more server wipes. So you wouldn't want to reset your character after that. Uh, resets could take up to 30 minutes though once you press the reset button you can only use the reset tool once every seven days and you will get a 15,006 error after you've reset your character until those 30 minutes are over or at least until it's ready so what does this actually reset well all your alpha uec earned in game will be lost and alpha uec will then be reset to its default value so this value your default alpha uec balance is the same amount of uec that you've got on the rsa website at the top right uh, and then they add 5,000 Alpha UEC to that. All players are given 5,000 Alpha UEC, basically. This does not include any UEC that's part of packages. That will be added once the game's going like live or whatever in the future. In the future, you'll get that Alpha UEC. Any ships, equipment, and other items purchased in-game or rent rented in-game with Alpha UEC will be lost. Missions and quest progress in-game will be wiped. Your spawn point will be reset and you'll be able to choose your starting point again. You'll need to recreate your character. All ships, vehicles and equipment will be reset to their default state and loadouts. But you'll still have access to any loner ships and you will not lose RSI hangar things. So you're not going to lose anything you've paid real money for, nothing that you've got from promos, uh, anything that's on the RSI website in your hangar that is tangible, that is kept. You don't lose that so don't worry about that too much rsi subscribers in february have access to the banu defender we don't know yet what the subscriber flair for the month is but we do know that they are doing alternate months with props and characters teams um working each month so last month we had combat knives variants of them anyway uh, there was a star citizen live that had them making bobbleheads it was mostly fluff and filler pretty chill nothing news tangible it was however not really what we've come to expect from cig um, which is i want news information development updates and at the moment uh, on youtube this video of the live um, vod uh, of that is the most disliked star citizen video that they've ever made i believe with um at time of recording 266 likes and um 900 dislikes please cig you have to improve and 
add additional video content or live content to make the subscriptions worthwhile. At least in my opinion, I can only represent myself. I can only talk about what I think and what I like. But I do think videos are the way to go. Give us more videos. That live content, sometimes it's really golden. Don't get me wrong. And sometimes that some of the inside Star Citizens they put out are great. But sometimes they're a bit lackluster and lacking. And that Star Citizen Live was just... It didn't give me anything. It was just them having a bit of a chat. Not necessarily related about Star Citizen. I do appreciate the hypocrisy of me saying that they need to improve their video content when I'm incredibly low effort with mine. So <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you thinking of getting a Cutlass Red or a Carrack? Do you already own one? Uh, are you really excited for 3.8.2 or 3.9 or the addition of the 4.1 roadmap next week. Do you think more features will slip? Do you think we'll see the return of salvage? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. February 2020's giveaway is for a Cutlass Black and upgrade to a Cutlass Red as well, which you can apply separately, and a Star Citizen game package with that. So you don't need to own Star Citizen already. This is a, the full shebang. All you need to do to be in for a chance to win that is just comment on any of my videos made during this month. There are the full details in the description below. I'm a massive shill for a couple of services that you might find useful. NordVPN, they provide an affordable VPN service that provides many improvements over a free VPN. I use them. They have a huge range of servers, allowing you additional safety, security, and help you get access to content. It's usable while you're playing games or streaming or whatever. You can find the links down below or use the code BoardGamer to get up to 70% off and an additional free month as well. There's Shadow Tech as well. They are a subscription-based cloud gaming PC service, allowing you to stream a gaming PC environment to another device, meaning that you don't need to own a gaming PC or upgrade. You can stream uh, to your phone. You can stream to a lesser PC or a laptop or whatever. They are planning some amazing 4K gaming systems for 2021, and there's a waiting list for them. But... You can use their boost service, which is great for Star Citizen currently, and new accounts will activate in April for that. Right inside the Star Citizen now for 3.9. Hmm. Again, links below and use the code BoardGamer for discount. BoardGamer is a community supported channel, and you can help by liking, subscribing, and sharing these videos, as well as sharing your feedback in the comments below, or even emailing me at contact at boardgamer.co.uk. There's loads of links below to all my sort of social medias and Discord servers and all that sort of jazz. Viewers that would like to go beyond that, there is Patreon and YouTube channel membership, the join button below the videos. That gives us extra money so that I can, you know, expand the channel and buy hardware and all that sort of jazz. It really does help. There are some bonuses and exclusives for those people as well. But I do want to make content for everyone regularly. So you are helping support that content for everyone. Woo! Thank you so much for watching. I wish you good fortune for February and in the verse. <laughs>